the work that is conducted by me and my research group focuses on developing new methods for finding diamond deposits and characterizing diamond deposits. But at the same time, we use the diamonds as unique scientific probes or windows into the deep earth. Our group found the first example of ringwoodite that was discovered in the earth. That, so that, that sounds like a fairly obscure mineral, but it's actually one of the most common minerals that makes up the earth. If you wanted to extract some ringwoodite and place it on the earth's surface, if you did that very slowly at, say, walking pace, then the ringwoodite would revert to its low pressure form. What we found is an inclusion trapped in a diamond. The beauty of the diamond is that the diamond structure is so rigid that it traps and, and maintains a very high internal pressure. So it stops ultra high pressure forms of minerals reverting to their low pressure form because the diamond acts like this very strong cage. The, the mineral's wanting to expand, but the diamond's stopping it expanding. Well, first of all, it allowed some immediate interpretation of some unusual seismological signals. So, so the only other way of, of looking at the deep earth remotely is using seismology. Because when we've now got a much clearer idea about the presence of water at depth in the earth, it allows a whole new interpretation of the field of seismology at those depths in the earth. It's also triggered a whole new wave of experiments to try and tighten up what the water solubility in ringwoodite is and so that we've got a much better idea of what the whole earth water cycle is. So that so our research has triggered a lot more experiments of people trying to experimentally um, calibrate this recycling process now that we know that there's definitely water around those depths. The challenges with this particular work are the sample sizes and getting the right samples. So, so firstly you have to spend many, many hours looking through a lot of samples. With the beauty of diamonds it, it visually is because they refract, they bend light. So if you're looking into a diamond and you think you see an inclusion in a certain place, often it's not where it you think it is because the light's been bent, so you've got to sort of guesstimate where the inclusion actually is. So that's all very tricky and it, it requires a great deal of patience and a great deal of really willpower to keep searching through thousands of diamonds until you find the right sample. I think we get the benefit of the best of both worlds working on, on diamonds in that the diamonds are a big economic driver. So one of the reasons to work on diamonds in Canada is because they supplied over 90% of the GDP of the Northwest Territories. But the, the beauty is that you get a second bite of the cherry as well because you, there's this amazing scientific information that's trapped within the diamonds. And so we have this sort of added incentive to help find diamonds because they give you these, these unique pieces of information that you just can't get out of the earth any other way. Yeah, as you might imagine, we need the help from industry either to, to give us samples and to work with industry. They fund um, a lot of the work that we do. The other support really comes from the province, the University of Alberta, um, Canadian Foundation for Innovation, and also the Alberta side of that, Alberta Innovates, that, that provides match funding for a lot of the what is often very expensive and very sophisticated equipment. Well, one of the reasons to come to Alberta is that it had a really, really strong diamond research group. It was really a let's do it rather than thinking of reasons not to do it attitude in Alberta. Yeah, I'm, I'm very honoured. I mean, it's always you know, looking at whoever's won this award before. It, it's pretty humbling company. And so it's very pleasing just to 